on the Magi's Star, Marsilio Ficino, 1482. Grant us your favor, my Lord. Show us this day your star, the one once you showed to the Magi, the star that led the Magi to Christ may lead us to Christ's mysteries. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. With these words, Balaam, in the book of Numbers, foretells the coming of the Messiah. One day a star will rise in an extraordinary way in Judea. Balaam lived in the eastern area, where Magi lived too. And among them were some priests very skilled in astronomy, ruling people. Thus, they, attentive students of the skies, had noticed an event that, according to Balaam, would be showed by the prodigy of the star. Eventually, when Jesus was born, an extraordinary comet shone in the highest part of the sky. What scholars thought about a comet is stated by Oregon in his Contra Celsum, when he refers that he read in the book of the Stoic Cherubim about the comets, that in some cases they indicate happiness and prosperous events. The one shining at the time of Augustus had this nature. He says that Cherimin mentioned the story and adds that Chaldeans, after having studied and realized that their demons were weakened, left for Judea in order to worship a god stronger than their demons. Chalcidius, the Platonist, attests the same, referring us several stories about stars. We can see very rarely the ones signifying great calamities. Then, he adds, there is another tale too, more sacred and venerable, which he states it was noticed by the Chaldeans too, stating that neither illness nor death were heralded by the birth of a certain or specific star, but the holy coming of God in order to bring the grace of redemption to the man and to the deadly things. Therefore, Chaldeans venerated the just-born God, bringing him gifts. Chalcidius states this, and Sventonius is another witness with his words, quote, an old and persistent opinion crossed to the east, so it was believed that in that time fate decreed some men from Judea would conquer the power, and because of this, Jews clashed with Romans and lost. End quote. From this, we deduce that in some way, Eastern astronomers, using astrology rules and according omens consistent with them, judge that a king due to reform the world for its better, with enormous authority, should be born in that time. In judging the comet prosperous and healthy, in fact, they realize it comes from the nature of the Sun, Jupiter, and Venus. They teach, in fact, that when its color is dark, the comet, the comet is Saturnian and means plague with famine. When it is the same color of fire, it is a Martian comet and means battles and fires. And the greatest part of comets are of these two varieties. In fact, the fire and the impetuous strength of Mars draws terrestrial fumes higher in the upper part of the air, near the fire sphere where they, are bur where they burn. From comets, from omens, and from planets, they judge about several events from those comets that, when rising, turn from south to north, encircled by their tail, and the opposite. So, when Eastern astronomers in December saw a comet rising in the beginning of Sagittarius, they judged it a benevolent apparition, because it shed golden rays, being of sun nature, silver rays because of Jupiterian nature, mixed rays because of Venusian nature. 
Maybe Jupiter, too, was in that moment in the beginning of Sagittarius. The sun, if we're in right calculations, was in the middle of the sign. Maybe Venus, always near to the sun, was in the last degree of the sign. Likely, this is the sky configuration at Jesus' birth in the month of December, if he was born after the first half of the night. In fact, we read in the Gospel that while shepherds kept their night vigils, the angels said, This day he is born. The celestial configuration caused great admiration and great quarrels. Because of the position of Jupiter, Sun, and Venus, they judged he would be a rightful king of greatest fame, with merciful, but because of the Sun, he could not be very rich. How will he be both a great king and poor? Considering Jupiter rising in the angle of the geniture, they judged the nativity very favorable, but sterile because the moon was in the first fascia of Virgo, being the stress on a virgin rather than on a pregnant woman. Because of these astrological considerations, and because Balaam and other prophets' predictions, a common opinion crossed the East. A king of justice was born or appointed because of Jupiter, of truth, because of the sun, of grace, because of Venus. But nobody knew the place where he was born. But the comet guided them towards for two months, according to the two hours of the ascension of the sign and even if its direction was from the south towards Judea, anyway, it does not indicate a determined place. Till this moment, in fact, they could not say if he was already born or going to be born, if he was sent by the sky or if he came by divine will. But because the comet showed itself again after two years, with reference to two months, at this time, not in higher, but in a lower level of the sky. The Magi, recognizing the comet, followed its movement under its guidance. They arrived in 41 days to Jerusalem. They were not looking for any human king anymore, but for a God king. They saw, in fact, that this kind of comet and its motion could not be natural. The fact that the Magi arrived there and they informed Herod of the birth of so a great king and the moment of his arrival, it can be attested not just by the gospel, but even by the microbius who say, when Augustus heard that among the children killed in Syria by Herod, king of the Jews, there was even Herod's child exclaimed, it's better to be Herod's swine rather than his child. So I believe that the comet not natural but divine was moved and lightly by the archangel Gabriel it was Gabriel in fact that announced John Christ forerunner to Zechariah and Christ to Mary it was him to show the Gentiles at the birth of Christ and the place where it occurred and through the Gentiles he persuaded Jews too and under the form of a star informed the students of stars and through the light of the star, derived from the sun, he guided them towards the sun. The astronomers brought gold to the just-born king because they judged him having a sun nature. With perfumed incense, they indicated the grace of Venus. With myrrh, they indicated a life under the influence of Jupiter, unaware of putrefaction. In the same time, these gifts were converged by another secret. In fact, with the gold, helped him because he was poor. With the myrrh, gave him strength to tender flesh. And the incense, they perfumed the stable. They gave him gold because he was a king, the incense because he was a priest, and the myrrh because he was God. It is likely the comet was an angel like an angel in human guise guided Tobias's travel. In the same way, the angel under the guise of a comet guided the journey of the astrologers towards Christ. 
In fact, as Moses the Egyptian, the most learned of all Jews, states, the supreme knowledge of the stars led Abraham to understand, the first and only one of his generation, that there is first and only cause in the sky, and pleading to worship him, and because of this he had from God the gift of grace and the prophecy. But let us come back to the comet. According to Luke's Gospel, in the very moment when our Christ was born, an angel of God encircled with light shepherds and heralded them with great joy, telling them, Today is born the Savior of the world. He said correctly, Today, because he intended in this day, even if it was the mist of the night. The light of the common, in fact, brought the daylight in that moment. From this, David said, and the night will shine as the day. Then the angel turned towards the east, promptly directed by the comet towards Persia, in order to guide from there the Magi to Christ. From here, Isaiah said, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and thy glory of the Lord is risen upon thee, and people walk in your light. In fact, when the Lord was born, this light appeared around Jerusalem. Thus, Gentile Magi walked to this light, traveling first from Judea to the east. And in fact, the comet came back then from east to Judea, guiding the Magi there. We believe the fact that the comet was the same angel heralding the great joy to the shepherds. Because when the Magi saw again the star, they greatly rejoiced. I said greatly, because they had already rejoiced, like shepherds did the first time they saw it. So they rejoiced greatly because the good already experimented arriving in its plenty and greatly appreciated, and the fact one could get more of it after a stop. The same angel who guided with visible rays, magi to Christ, warned them with invisible rays, the minds of sleeping magi, to not reach Jerusalem and warned Joseph to fly to Egypt with the child. At the time of Christ's death, it was the angel who caused a sun eclipse in a supernatural way during a full moon. Because it was in fact a full moon and he had turned at midday the day and night. Him that for the birth of Christ had turned midnight and day. From this, David said, the darkness and the light are both alike to thee, because both are done by the same angel, and both times in the middle hour, both of the day and the night. In which way the angel condensed the comet, being directly in the middle level of the air, he put together one thousand stadia of air spread around him in the smallest area. He tied them to him with an extraordinary power like the body of the soul, and parted them with other elements. Then, using the energy of the cloth, like a fluid was pushed in a very narrow space and parted from the water. But why did the angel condense air? Because the light he was going to impress in the air could be perceived by the human eye. In fact, a very rare substance always escapes to the eyesight. Where did he take the light to transmit to that body? From the light of his mind. In it is the fact that there is an invisible and intellectual light which transmitted in the air becomes visible in the subtler air visible to the saints, in the denser to the others too. We told that the Magi arrived to Jerusalem to the 21st day after the birth. When Mary observed the time of the purification, led her child to the temple. So in the day Simeon and Anna know Christ, Magi preached for him in Jerusalem, and still they didn't know him. The day after they reached Bethlehem, but because Joseph, to the approaching of the Magi, receives the order to fly with the child, it is unlikely he brought the child to temple after the divine order. It is likely that Magi had welcomed the child after purification.
what we told about Sagittarius because of calculation of someone else could be in my opinion told more rightly about Virgo at midnight while Christ was born necessarily one of the twelve signs was rising I don't know which sign I should give to the one is born from a virgin more than Virgo and mostly from the first facie of this sign in fact every sign has three facies in the first facie of Virgo like Albumerser states Indians and Chaldeans have contemplated the image of a virgin girl very beautiful sitting feeding a child the rising of this facie agrees perfectly with the child born from a virgin and if one well compute the first facie of Virgo is rising in the middle of December at midnight The people believe the comet glowed in this facie, not a cause, but sign of Christ. If the comet had the power to cause a virginial delivery, surely it would do this more frequently in the centuries. But celestial bodies can't create a religion that, putting aside the sky, would worship something above the sky and hope in it. Celestial fate cannot benefit a law by denying the fate. Light which from good is spread through all the spirits, its benefice. It grants us to direct towards the good and quitten in it and make it possible with what we love the good and rejoice in it. Whatever particular good has with him the image of the goodness itself. When men without charity, the ones tormented by envy are starting to fall in the darkness out of benefits of light. In fact, they hate good and they suffer in it.